Regional security implications as China and the United States become more competitive. A new report also looks at how COVID-19 has worsened tensions. Both points come from the Asia-Pacific Regional Security Assessment that was released by the International Institute of Strategic Studies. It's found that the pandemic has impacted Asia's defense and security environment. Nations that handled the coronavirus well, including Australia, China and South Korea, have boosted defense spending, while others that didn't cope so well, like India and Indonesia, well, they've had to announce cuts. And with increasing U.S.-China tensions, Southeast Asia's efforts to avoid taking sides are expected to become even more challenging. For more, Bruce Klingner, Senior Research Fellow, Northeast Asia, the Heritage Foundation, joins us live. Uh, Bruce, COVID-19 has forced bilateral relations to go virtual. Has this had any significant impact on security in the region? We've all certainly struggled with doing things virtually rather than in person, but in the United States, things are starting to loosen up. Uh, and Deputy Secretary of State Wendy Sherman recently traveled to Southeast Asia, and prior to that, uh, the U.S. Secretaries of State and Defense visited Japan uh, and South Korea. And there have been a number of virtual meetings, including the first uh, virtual summit meeting of the Quad. So uh, I, I think we're, we're starting to come out of it, and certainly governments are contacting each other virtually. Perhaps a bigger impact is uh, the canceling or constraining of military exercises, particularly in South Korea, where we've now had several years of downgraded military exercises, which could impact our readiness to, to defend and defeat the North Korean threat. The pandemic notwithstanding, Mr. Klingner, several countries in the region, they continue to walk a tightrope between the United States and China. Do you anticipate that this will continue and perhaps even worsen? It will certainly be an issue for all countries in the region. Um, as some have said, is their, their hearts are in Washington, but their wallets are in Beijing because China is the largest trading partner for most Asian nations. Uh, and we're going to see the, a continuing competition between the U.S. and South Korea, but it's, it's not just bilateral. The U.S. is seeking multilateral response to China's intimidation of Taiwan, its belligerent actions in the South and East China Seas. Uh, it's illegal or unfair trading practices, uh, as well as ch addressing Chinese human rights violations in Hong Kong and the Xinjiang province. So, uh, it, you know, if we band together, it's easier to try to confront China for its aggressive actions than if smaller nations particularly have to deal with it on their own. And in your opinion, how big a threat is or are tensions on the Korean Peninsula? And how can regional cooperation, perhaps even with China, help with that? It's always a question of when tensions will spike on the peninsula. Right now, it's it's relatively quiet, uh, but we're just simply waiting for North Korea to do its next provocation. They typically have done something very provocative, such as a nuclear test or a long-range missile test in the first year of a new U.S. or South Korean administration. Uh, they say it's to train them like a dog, in the words of a North Korean defector. They feel it gives them leverage and uh, they may do that with uh, Joe Biden to test him. Uh, but conversely, COVID may be holding back on their provocative actions if it's meant to drive U.S. negotiators to the table. As long as they're refusing to meet with negotiators, in part because of COVID, uh, that may delay what will eventually be a North Korean provocation at some point down the road. Well, thank you for your thoughts this evening. Bruce Klingner, Senior Research Fellow, Northeast Asia at the Heritage Foundation.